There are so many artists, though, that I admire. I mentioned Sebastian Kruger. That guy is just a madman. He paints some of the most amazing portraits and caricatures that I have just ever seen. He started out, I think, as, as just a painter. Like It looked like I read He has a book called Backstage, and I don't think it's really available in the United States. I, um, my friend Dion got one because he was a guest speaker at a caricature convention that I attended years back, and he brought only so many for us to purchase. And they, of course, sold out immediately or shortly after the convention. Um, but I remember reading what I can out of the captions and seeing what I could because I know a little bit of German. So I took in high school. Very strange. Looking back, why did I take German? I don't know. They offered two languages. And I am half German. So I thought, hey, I'll speak German. I didn't even know why. It was part of the uh, enrichment or gifted program in my high school, which was not very good, but, um, you know, I had to take what I could get. <laughs> anyway, um, Sebastian Kruger was clearly working towards, like, an illustration career or just a, just a, I don't know, it looked like some sort of fantasy painting or or portrait painting. It was a combination of many elements, and it looked a little, a little out there. But he, you could tell that he always loved caricature he always loved portraiture and shortly into his career he was just doing heavy portraiture and of course anyone who's seen it is totally in love with it but recently I noticed that he starts doing his pieces um, he's doing mostly uh, portraits and not caricature and there is some caricature involved because a great portrait is caricature is caricatured a little bit to a certain degree and you don't want to just make things rigid you know you want things to have some sort of life to them. So if you do a portrait and it's exact, if you trace a portrait, it's not going to be as appealing or as recognizable as a slightly exaggerated portrait. And they say that there's been a, apparently tests. There was a special on, on I think, the Learning Channel or something my friend showed me, or maybe Discovery. And they showed how they actually tested people, seeing which picture was more recognizable, who who they could pick out of, out of photos or out of line drawings and the line drawings that were exaggerated were far more recognizable to the individuals and you might argue oh well if it's exact then you know there's no there's no no chance that it's even close if it's exactly drawn right then it's going to look more like the person but that's not true unless you have something that's rendered because like i've said your mind doesn't think in photographs your mind remembers impressions now, I don't know if everyone's mind does. Maybe some people do think in photographs. I just don't think that it's common, and I've been told that that's not true, so I'm just repeating what I've been told. Go sue the person that told me that. So I'm going to get a little darker. Um, basically, I like to, uh, when I'm doing digital painting, I'm learning that y I can really take advantage of the uh, the undefinite nature of it, I guess would be a lack of a better term, i call it that, where you can sort of define areas loosely and just build from there. You can push and pull. Now I've said before, when I paint, I don't feel that sort of a loose looseness to it because I feel like when I'm putting stuff on the board, maybe that's something I need to practice on, but I feel like when I'm putting things on the board or on the canvas that it's just far too easy to get caught up in the details of what you're doing or to be connected to it. But it's a psychological element. The digital paint, I don't feel the need to finish anything. I don't feel the need to finish it immediately anyway. I don't feel tied down to one image that is just completely ingrained. Once I draw it, it's done. Like when you draw on paper, it feels kind of final. It feels kind of like you uh, you committed to it right off the bat. But here, you know, this isn't even existing right now. This is just O's and ones in a computer. And that's a that's a wonderful advantage to have, and you have to take advantage of that. So I'm still just carving out shapes. If you can't tell what it is yet, uh, I don't know if I should feel sorry for you or be excited. <laughs> it's a pretty simple, pretty simple subject. Pretty cute to me. I may have mentioned in another podcast that I find these animals cute, so maybe. Maybe it's pretty easy to figure out what I'm doing here. So I'm going to...
continue to define some of these darks and then I'm going to jump onto the lights of the piece. But I definitely want to have fun with some exaggeration. I've noticed that I'm getting back to portraiture a little bit as I'm doing this, so I'm going to push it a little bit more as I go. I'm not going to be too bound to it. I'm going to go ahead and do this. This is one thing you can't be afraid to do. That's gone. And so is that. And so is that. I'm working with negative space now. I'm trying to make a more appealing shape to this. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. That's what I said is so great about digital. You know, this isn't complete, so I feel like I can just work it, work it, work it, find the silhouette that works for me, that I find interesting, and then just make it as, as great as I can. Now send me an email and let me know if you like this, uh, this format of just seeing the artwork or if you like seeing the brushes and palettes. I don't know if people are, if you're getting more out of the actual uh, painting or if you're getting more out of the process of everything. So I need to know. Send me an email or leave a comment. Let me know if you like, uh, if you like seeing what I'm doing or seeing what I'm thinking. I don't know which would be which, but we'll, we'll figure it out. So I'm going to redraw this right here. Oop. I like silhouettes. I like the the negative space of of a um, of an object or of a, a being. Just like a nice nice defin defined uh, area that has strong shape to it. Something interesting. Because if you're just going with what's there, yeah, it's, it can be good, but it's it's not inventive enough. And like I said, artists mostly what their what their value is is in their vision it's in their choices i've seen people that can that are just amazing artists but they do the most boring pieces you know someone might do a perfect portrait of george clooney but it's straight on and it's just smiling like yeah okay that's nice but why would i ever want to look at it again when I can look at a photograph of George Clooney. And that has nothing to do with portraiture, but everything to do with the most the interesting photo. You want it to be an interesting photo. So when I choose my caricatures or my my uh, animal drawings or whatever I'm doing, I like to make sure that what I'm doing is interesting to me. Because if I don't want to look at the photo I'm drawing, I'm not going to want to look at the artwork that comes from it. So you need some part of it to be interesting to you beyond just, I get to draw. You know, yeah, drawing's great, but if you can't really enjoy what you're drawing, uh, it's just pointless. And you have to be interested in the shape of what you're drawing. So I'm going to move down into the body a little bit more. I'm spending a lot of time in the head. Big surprise, I love caricatures. I end up working too much on the head. And I'm going to define some of these, these uh, areas coming down into the body here. Shadows are always fun to me because um, I, I noticed, I always noticed it when I was younger but I never thought about it. Um, shadows receding around a soft form or a curved form are always going to have soft edges and shadows that are cast with a strong light source, with any sort of strong light source, even just you know a minimal light source that's fairly direct are going to have harsh edges. And um, my friend Court Jones, I know I keep mentioning him, just someone that I admire a little bit, a good friend of mine, he, uh, he pointed that out to me a little, probably about two years ago. And it's one of those things where you've seen it before, but I just don't, I don't think about it until someone calls it out like that. It's again, just helping create the interesting silhouette. So I enjoy playing with shadows and even exaggerating that. Because, you know, right now I'm enjoying just drawing this creature, but exaggeration is the name of the game for me. I really like creating a distortion or an exaggeration that's unique.